Hi. Mr. McAndrews left. <clears throat> so there's nobody tell me that I should have been eating uh, lunch because now it's like the clock. And I didn't eat. So I don't care if you like that or not. If you think watching somebody eats gross, you just like turn away and listen very carefully. I want to give you a little um, intro to the intro for the first sections 15.1 and 15.2. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit to it and kind of highlight what I really want you to know out of this. First of all, um, both uh, paper-wise and electronically, I sent you a bunch of stuff, and some of you have already come and pick up your, your paper versions. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to open up the links and stuff that I gave you. And one of them's got a big old pie chart thing on it. Um, we'll be looking at that coming up soon. The next time that I'll show up on the Internet for biology, we'll be getting into some of the nitty-gritty about uh, jellyfish and sponges and hydra and stuff like that. I've also got some stuff ordered for lab uh, probably late next week. So uh, I'll give you more information when that's when it's getting closer. I also sent you um, something of my own making here on invertebrate classification. Today we're just going to start talking about how invertebrates are one part of the kingdom. Animalia, which is what the next uh, several chapters are about. So studying animals, remember uh, studying plants was botany, studying animals is zoology. Even says so in the book. Zoology. Zoo or zoo, animal, ology or logy meaning the study of. It's one of my favorite classes. In college was my zoology class from my zoologist professor, Dr. England. First thing we had to know was how to say it right. Zoology. And in the first section, 15.1, it goes through characteristics of the kingdom animalia. And I want, I want to let you know this, that oftentimes when we think of the word animal, we don't think of things like a snail. We don't think of things like like uh, sea animals. I just used the word animal there. Um, they are the little beach flies or fleas or things like that. We don't think of those types of things. We definitely don't think of sponges. We don't think of coral, right? I mean, that probably did not occur to you to think about that. But they are animals, and they'll be some of the first animals that we're going to look at. Coral is a living structure. We got be able to pull carbon dioxide out of the water and extract that and then bind it with some oxygen to make uh, carbonate, CO3. And then they bind that to calcium that's also in the water and they make calcium carbonate, which is that kind of hard, more like uh, bony type of structure that you'll see in coral. Now this is soft coral, doesn't have a whole lot of that. Uh, this is just like its skeleton that's left over, but the regular coral that you got things like this, hard coral, little animals lived inside of the openings that were here, but this was just kind of like their skeletal structure, but they had soft body tissue, little things that come out and would feed. So they oftentimes they very, look very uh, plant-like. All right, the, the coral reefs and whatnot looks like a bunch of little things. Or if you've ever gone to a really good, um, a really good fish store, and you go to uh, um, the one there in town by the movies and by the round table there, they have really good aquariums inside of there. Or there's one over by Subway on, on East. It has really good stuff in there. And so oftentimes they'll have saltwater tanks with coral inside of it or been to a really good aquarium been to monterey aquarium or there's one on the oregon coast there in newport very good and you can see lots of all the cool stuff if you've never been to an aquarium you've got to do it you've got to do it like this summer when i was a kid family won tickets on the popeye show to marine land ocean land ocean world Whatever. And then on vacation one time we went to San Diego and we went to SeaWorld and that was so killer. Awesome. Love stuff like that. 
my zoology class and my marine biology class were two of the best. But, okay, again, point is we don't think of these types of things as being animals, right? Or sponge. We don't think of a sponge being an animal, but it is. It's one of the first ones that we're going to study. We think of lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Think of things like that. Now, um, that span there from a sponge or jellyfish all the way to a lion or a person, all of them would be in the same category of the animals because they share certain characteristics. And uh, at the beginning of the book, we we're saying what's alive, and a lot of these same things were on there. Now, we use this in, in a sort of, um, oh, I guess in the, your lab book, it has this like life process chart thing kind of go through this list of things and they say so what's true about this particular one this particular animal how does it fit into the into um, the whole scheme movement can go anywhere from a sponge that sits there and does nothing it's called sessile or coral which doesn't really leave its skeleton to things that tr that migrate long distances you know birds and albatross and stuff like that support well, that's talking about, um, well, a lot of things, if they live in the ocean, buoyancy of the water is their support system, or their body cavity is full of water, which gives it some structure and some form. Think of like a sea anemone. If it's in the water, it's usually up like this. And then if it's the tide goes out, they usually kind of like flop over and look like saggy bottoms or something. We have skeletons, or you think of maybe a crustacean, which has a shell. There's still some type of support that lends to the the next one, protective body covering. Exoskeletons is protective body covering. Some of them have little you know little things they shoot out to like zap people. <clears throat> you got uh, jellyfish have nidoblasts. You're gonna see some of that in slow motion. Uh, you've got hair, skin, scales, feathers. You got all these kinds of things. They're protective body coverings. It varies dramatically as you go from sponges and jellyfish and things like that through the phylum, shelled animals, etc., cetera, uh, all the way up to people with, with um, skin and hair, things like that. Nutrition, some are filter feeders. Like that's, uh, they, um, sponges have a bunch of pores that suck water in from the ocean and then they digest, they collect what they want and then they shoot out the other water that, um, that the stuff that they they filtered out and they didn't eat you can have ones that go and prey on stuff you can have ones that um, sting things and then slowly digest them you got people and go on and hunt stuff so nutrition varies very widely as well respiration is the way that they uptake oxygen again you can go all the way from sponges extracting some of this stuff from ocean water to animals that have gill structures like clams and fish um, up to things like spiders which have these things called book lungs the people that have regular lungs circulation whether that's just in current and out current x current pores on a sponge to um, clams and insects that have what's called an open circulatory system they have a heart that pumps blood out and washes all their internal organs rather than it going through tubes to like us where we have a whole vascular system circulation excretion how to get rid of wastes again sponges are just going to shoot it out of pore um, we'll go from kind of real no in one end out the other type of digestive system to like where we get worms where they have a very uh, very distinct mouth digestive system and anal pore response might be as much as like a clam nose when the water changes around it to to close up its its shells to protect itself or um, or squid that will squirt water out at you uh, all the way to uh, Abigail Walker when you slam on the thing you jump out at her out of the closet Wah! and she'd be like Wah! and reproduction and there are wide varieties of that do they lay eggs is it all external do they spawn into the ocean and reaches the other the other animal um, do they break off do they uh, <clears throat> give live birth all these varied varied 
ways of reproduction. So that's the first. Everything's going to have some type of characteristic there, and they won't all be very similar. There's such a variety out there in the animal world that makes it really interesting. And uh, the second part, uh, 15.2, which we have basic anatomy, we do have a lot of, uh, of terms. If you took that course with me three years ago in seventh grade, uh, we went over these quite a bit, and they come in pairs. Once you know, they come in pairs. So we've got this pair here, cephalic and caudal. Uh, cephalic means toward the head, and caudal means toward the tail. Heads and tails. Um, anterior and posterior. This is my anterior side. This is my posterior side, front and back, and depending on which way the animal is situated. That front and back orientation might be a little bit different, but these are opposites, anterior, posterior, toward the front, toward the back. We have dorsal and ventral, which for, for us is the same. Dorsal is along the back, like a shark. Ding, ding. Ding, 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 Dorsal and ventral. Ventral means along uh, the stomach side of things. Okay, so dorsal and ventral are opposites of each other. Lateral and medial are opposites of each other. Lateral means toward the side, and medial means down the middle. So we're like toward the middle or toward the sides. So we describe things. Lateral and medial, and then the last one is transverse and bilateral. Transverse would be like looking across this way, cross section, a lateral, a transversal, and bilateral means let's split you right down the center this way and see that you've got a, you've got a left side and you've got a right side. Eyeballs. Ears, nostrils, hands, elbows, shoulders, one belly button. Unless you've got two. Some people have two. Did you know that? Two belly buttons? Or what? Seth doesn't have any belly buttons. He lost his belly button. So we got um, these words that help us describe things like symmetry. Let me give you a few examples really quickly. Symmetry could be anywhere from something that has no symmetry. It's just kind of like a blob. Asymmetrical or amorphous. No shape. No form. You could have things that are kind of circular or wheel shaped. You got radial. It should make sense. Now this is from a sea urchin. It has a top and it has a bottom. And they're distinct and they're different. But it doesn't really have a left side or right side. You can cut through the middle anywhere here and more or less it's the same, even though it does have a sort of five part symmetry. Um, its gen general body shape has no left side and right side, but it does have a top and has a bottom. That's radial symmetry. You can have bilateral, bilateral symmetry like this little seahorse. Oh, he's so cute. He's got a left side and a right side. You can have spherical too, but we don't get a lot of that in the animal kingdom. Um, Anyway, so you got different kinds of classification there by the type of symmetry. And as we do various observations and uh, dissections, that'll be something that we have to pay attention to. Lastly, classification is not as simple as the book uh, initially on face value. Let's get focused here. Makes it out to be. Uh, the book kind of just divides things up into invertebrates and vertebrates, but it's not quite that simple. Invertebrates will want will be one major phylum. Uh, well, actually, one major category subkingdom with multiple phyla underneath it. But if you go forward to um, to chapter seventeen, the beginning of chapter seventeen, when we're all done with all the invertebrates, we're going to go back and we're going to revisit this. That there's basically invertebrates and then there's chordates. Chordates has to do with a like a nerve cord, right? And these ones don't have that, but these ones have like a either a backbone or a nerve cord or something like that. And there's actually three categories there. One is called cephalochordates, another one called urochordates. We don't hear about them very often and we don't encounter them very often, but they're interesting organisms. And then they'll go into the vertebrates. So it's not just invertebrates and vertebrates, it's invertebrates and chordates, which uh, come in several different categories. So you need to be aware of that. You might want to check out the first pages of chapter 17 to, uh, to see uh, what that's like. Looking forward to sharing with you and for you to get able to see some of these interesting things. I think you'll 
you'll find that uh, sponges are pretty interesting. You can see here on this picture, you got in current ports and then one big X current port out the top. Very kind of weird ones. We have some tunicates in a little jar. We've got things like like sand dollars, which are kind of like uh, sea stars. We've got starfish, which have a top and bottom, but not a left or a right. We've got, you know, things that snails lived in funny shells. This one is part of a family with some of the most poisonous organisms out there and uh, cool shells that are secreted like uh, like this turritella shell got some cutaways so anyway there'll be some really cool things to look at I think do a little dissection here and there um, you get to see what the insides of some of these things look like and see how varied and different God has made the animal world he did a really good job on days on day three on day five, on day six, things that we might not think of being part of the animal kingdom that, that are like sponges and tuna kits and jellyfish and coral and things like that that are really fun to go and look at. But again, if you haven't been to a um, to an aquarium lately, you should go and you should go and visit one uh, this summer. Make it a make it a point to go out and do something different. Maybe go up an estuary. Estuary? How do you want to say that? Go to the beach. Find a tide pool. Do something that you haven't uh, maybe done before and, and look around. There's a lot of things to see.